그럼 오늘 강연을 해주실 오후, 오후 실시는 강연을 해주실 폴홍 교수님을 소개하겠습니다. 어, 폴 교수님은 어, 한국 연세대학에서 어, 경제학을 공부하시고 그리고 볼링 그린 스테이트 유니버스티에서 MBA를 하시고 그리고 어, 미국의 톨레이더 대학에서 Manufacturing Management of Engineering이라는 분야로 박사학위를 하신 이후에 현재 톨레이더 대학에서 Distinguished University Process로 계십니다. 어, 교수님께 직접 또 본인 그 경력을 소개하실 거기 때문에 이 정도로 본인 소개는 하고 어, 강연 강연 소개는 <웃음> 이 정도로 하고 어, 교수님을 강연자로 교수님을 모시겠습니다. 박수로 환영해 주십시오. 아, uh, thank you, thank you for uh, your kind introduction. So can you hear me well? Huh? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh. All right. So um, as introduced, uh, my PhD degree is in manufacturing management and engineering. So uh, in both uh, business and engineering. So my research is in both uh, business and engineering over the years. So uh, this is also based on this. Um, I will talk about the research career. The last week, undergraduate students is more about life uh, itself. But this one, I do research area, so I'm gonna talk about this, okay? Right? So uh, the title is a dynamic world and innovation imperatives in preparing future life scenario. Okay, that is my, my title. Uh, so this is the Korea. So uh, many of us, and including you, actually come from Korea or connected to your parents. And then I'm here in uh, Toledo. Toledo is uh, between Michigan and Ohio, uh, this is Lake Erie. Uh, this is the United States. So uh, Europe and the United States are neighbors, right? Okay. Uh, let me just introduce myself. Uh, I spent my first 25 years in Korea. So there I uh, finished my education in uh, university. And this is the high school I graduated from. And so uh, this, uh, the, uh, this uh, president of uh, our Korean president and this Korean war and then Japanese colonial rule. And I'm just familiar with a lot of this Korean uh, this, uh, the, uh, history and the Korean sentiment. So hence I spent first 25 years in Korea. By the way, this is my wife, my mother, my mentors right here. Uh, so I have a, what I call Korean DNA, Korean DNA. So uh, since I have a chance to introduce people what Korea and Korean DNA. So I summarize Korean DNA in uh, in uh, seven uh, seven uh, M. So uh, this is the way um, I introduce Korea. So what does Korea means to me? Korea is a country of endurance and resilience. Uh, when I think about Korea, always the mothers, mothers uh, sacrifice and dedication. Even my mother, you know, to raise five children. Uh, through Korean War and afterward, and just work six o'clock in the morning to twelve midnight, just hard work, just purely hard work and uh, this dedication. Korea is a country of uh, long memory with a uh, five thousand plus years history. Korea are in between China and Japan, as a constant war, so meaning of suffering is very very uh, this clear. Uh, and then uh, Korea is also a country of uh, mountains, many mountains, so 70% of the mountains. So Korea is very, uh, this, uh, the uh, goal oriented. Korea is doing things very fast. So, Pali uh, Pali, I guess the speed is a Korea. And the Korean people are very motivated. So, uh, parents constantly talk about what you become, so motivation. Korea is a country of a discipline, achievement, so nasty. So this is the way I summarize about what Korea uh, is uh, really about, okay? Right. Then I spent another uh, 35 plus years in the United States. I came to the United States, and there I uh, uh, <coughs> get used to uh, this, this American, actually, uh, I'm not a naturalized citizen now, 
and so uh, what are these United States remain? I love uh, these two movies, I Am a Star, uh, or uh, the Saving Private Ryan, or Gettysburg, and these are uh, the American movies and the, the, the American president I just participated on this, this election. And uh, recently, uh, American image is not uh, actually as, as the best uh, as it used to, but in, this, uh, in spite of all these, uh, these changes in America, uh, what I experienced of America, I summarize in the seven F. Okay, uh, America is a country of faith, whether secular faith or deep religious faith is a country of faith. Faith is the foundation of this country. And then uh, freedom is the uh, idea of freedom, individual and privacy and freedom. And American uh, really uh, value this family. And so uh, although the divorce rate is seems to be high in certain, certain factors, but family is very important. So American people as an individual nation, they uh, love to make friends. And then American sense of fairness. And when it's two or three year old child, the first phrase they learn is, oh, that's not fair. That means whatever the rules you have, that should be applied to our people across the board. And then America is a young country compared to so frontier spirit. And then, as I said, uh, American optimism. Uh, it is about always our future. It's a young country. So that is uh, the way I uh, saw. So these uh, are the seven F aspects. Since I lived here in the United States a lot longer than in Korea. So that is also uh, my uh, this, uh, this, uh, second uh, DNA. So those is uh, those two. Now, as I look at the, uh, your profiles, many of you are uh, uh, in uh, engineering and science field. So I, I looked at this uh, Discover 2017. This is the top 10 greatest scientists of all time, starting from Albert Einstein, Marie Curie, Isaac Newton, Charles Darwin, Galileo Galilei. Uh, Galileo, uh, this Ada Lovelace, Peter Gross, Nikolai Tesla, Rosalind Franklin, and Carl uh, Liel. So I put all these years, how long they live. So uh, except Ada Lovelace and Rosalind Franklin, they died uh, in the in this, uh, they are in set, uh, uh, thirty. Most of them uh, live seventy, even eighty. Uh, so. Uh, in, in their time, I think they live a long life, okay, right? And then, uh, according to this Britannica, there's a hundred most influential scientists. So I just put here, starting from Hippocrates all the way to even Tinker, so it's a hundred. Now, uh, as I look uh, over these, uh, there are five common aspects of these. So what we, uh, what is a prominent and obvious is Histories are mostly European scientists, okay? Uh, so they are European. And then except two, Rosalind Franklin and other Lovelace, they have a long and productive life, okay, All right? Uh, and then they have a diverse interest in life. So since they studied, let's say, um, the uh, um, uh, Nicholas Tesla, uh, he's the father of uh, electricity and so forth. But they had a, a diverse life interest but their focus on achievement is very, very obvious. And then uh, men and women, so number of women slowly increase in number. So out of 10, out of three are women. And then their research is in European countries, okay? And so there's a theoretical rigor, but relevance to real world news. So their invention, creativity idea actually made a big and huge difference in people's lives. So with that, uh, since uh, many of you actually live in, uh, in Europe, so uh, this is my understanding what uh, Europe and European history and impact. Uh, since uh, 2000, I visited uh, more than 25 times in Europe and visit almost all different countries on various occasions for English lectures and conferences and so forth. So what does Europe really mean? So, uh, my understanding of what Europe is, I summarize in seven E's. Europe is, uh, uh, is a country, is, is a country. I mean, not country, but it's a civilization. A thousand years on earth, 
So uh, first thing I, I talk, uh, think about Europe is Europe uh, European energy. Okay, uh, when you see the modern Europeans, they are very nice and gentle. But when you study history of uh, Europe, where the Vikings and the, you know these uh, these uh, the, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, this, uh, even uh, England history and the tremendous number of wars, and so this energy is a very important aspect of European character, and the Europeans engage in constantly engage outside the world. So discovery of uh, uh, North and South European America and then Africa is a European effort. So engagement and there are these uh, these test of ideas to experiment and they constantly enlarge their uh, the boundaries. Enlargement and then uh, European uh, this enlightenment, discovery of reality, deeper reality and the broad. So enlightenment of this uh, sense and also the uh, respect of individual right is empowerment and then Europeans uh, this because all this combined is enrichment. So uh, when I really think about Europeans, uh, Americans is just a young uh, like a boy compared to Southern uh, civilization is a young youthful this is their uh, European as maturity. So I think this is the way I uh, uh, they summarize Europe. So I have a good, uh, deep respect of what Europe is about and what it stands for. So having said that, uh, let me just talk about the next one. Since it is about uh, uh, the students or uh, the young people who uh, set their minds on uh, the science career, so let me talk about innovation, innovation in time. So the way I define innovation is, innovation is an idea and technology driven changes at the present to change the quality of life. Okay, that's what innovation is about. Now, innovation imperative means is individual or organization innovation achievement require national innovation capability. So no individual organization just innovating when there is a context is not really there. So let me just look at this here. If you look at this current world, the most innovative economies in the world is the Bloomberg, and then of uh, this five year average, Germany come number one, South Korea number two, Singapore, Switzerland, Sweden, uh, Israel, Finland, Denmark, United States, and France. So if you look at the top 10, majority is United States. And uh, if you look at the, uh, in Asia, Korea comes uh, number two, Japan number 12, and China and is there. But majority is the Europeans and of course United States, right? Now, if you look at uh, this, the evidence of uh, this innovation outcome, Nobel Prize, uh, 1901 to 2018, the number of Nobel Prize winners from different countries, United States, then the 37, UK, 130, Germany, 108, and, uh, France, 69, Sweden, 31, Japan, 28, Canada, 26, Russia, 26, and so forth. So, the majority of European countries, uh, of course, United States uh, is a large number. I think is, we can see that uh, Europe and United States actually lead in innovation in the world. And on a number of uh, universities, they go to the top 100. If you look at here, United States is uh, uh, this, uh, more, about 45, uh, Germany, France, UK, and South Korea, Japan, China, Switzerland, and so on. The uh, number of uh, these best uh, university institutions and Nobel Prize, I think there's some uh, great correlation. And 10 leading countries in natural science research, according to nature, United States, China, Germany, United Kingdom, Japan, France, Canada, Switzerland, South Korea, and Australia. So if you look at here, uh, South Korea happens to be a part of all top 10 of uh, these countries. Now, uh, if you look at uh, this result of uh, uh, innovation in terms of GDP, gross domestic project, uh, product, and then scientific publication output, and the number of uh, companies, uh, the large companies, if you look at here, GDP, nominal GDP, United States is number one, about 20, uh, the, uh, the 20 trillion, and then uh, the China is about 70%, and, and so forth. And then you see that Korea is the top 10, and then this uh, number of uh, European countries 
in Asia, writing Asia, India, if you look at scientific publication, in terms of numbers, China is what uh, larger the United States, China, United States, India, Germany, Japan, and Kingdom, and South Korea top nine, and just ahead of uh, France. And if you look at the large numbers, numbers of companies, I'm a business professor, so uh, this number of uh, largest companies, about 2,000, top 2,000, or top 500, four to 500. If you look at the United States, is about out of 2,525, China 315, Japan 225, and Germany 85, UK 85, France 80, India 75, and South Korea, just a very small country, they're 65, or head of Canada and uh, these uh, other, other European countries. So uh, we can see that the innovation in terms of uh, uh, this people's idea organization, that is really uh, is reflected through this national innovation capabilities and different measures, right? Now, as we uh, look for uh, this 2040, so I think last week, uh, this uh, the under the student, actually they uh, in, in envision what 2040, 20 years uh, later will be like, a lot of them uh, talk about this tech, uh, technology-driven uh, innovation and change world. But two things I uh, would like to emphasize as we look for 2020. That is, there will be a continuously hegemonic rivalry. So this is a recent economist cover uh, 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 cover magazine. That is the, the China strategy American means. That means. China and America, this hegemonic rivalry will continue for that what it suggests is that the United States cannot do this alone and there should be uh, European Union, Canada, and then you know, Australia, and then the UK, and then South Korea, and Japan is really out of this Asia, two countries. So Korea is coming as a, a more prominent, not only in the innovation area, in political and US, uh, USA, uh, uh, this World Unit Court uh, cited Korea as one of the top 10 countries in terms of all uh, this, uh, this total, uh, this power. Now, if you look at uh, uh, Korean history, a very simple uh, this, uh, this summary of Korean history, if you look at the last 100 years of Korean history, although it's time period, people are doing things what they need to do, but as you look back, uh, step at this, uh, you look back in a little bit uh, longer perspective, there is a definitely this national agenda in different periods. So, for example, 1910 to 1945, you know, under Japanese colonialism, I think national independence, I think that is the national agenda. That doesn't mean everybody is agree on it, but that's what uh, I think the stream, mainstream was about. 1945, 1980, the division in Korean War and military dictatorship. I think the national agenda is becoming both from a very poor country and to be a country of what is economic uh, strength. <clears throat> and then 1980 to 2014 transition to free and democratic governance is a free democracy movement. I think that is the I think that's the national idea of him. Then uh, 2015, uh, you know, there's a word that there's a when you unification is not costly, merely costly, it is a bonanza. So I think there's a crazy personality that can just say this, but I think the point is that resolution of South Korean division and then unified Korea. Right now, you don't see uh, that prospect very clearly, but within the next 10, 20 years, this unified Korea will be uh, uh, just uh, the, um, uh, the reality. So within the next 10, 20, and 30 years, the new generation and the South Korea and the North Korea is united. I think the total population is more, um, uh, is more than about uh, 80 million, similar to uh, Germany. Their potential is very good. So as you plan your uh, this career, think about this, uh, this uh, the, uh, coming reality of unified Korea right now. The uh, uh, North Korea and South Korea, uh, in terms of economic uh, strength, and then this uh, South Korea is about 50 times. Uh, so, if Korea, North Korea is one, South Korea is a fifth. That's the uh, kind of size difference. But uh, combined, uh, this strength will 
start with a J. Tremendous thing, right? So <coughs> now since uh, this, uh, we after we uh, uh, I discussed briefly about this uh, this macro level world, and ultimately uh, the, uh, the point is what you do in a personal level. Okay, personal level, what you do, I can show uh, personal level. This is what I actually uh, emphasize to uh, my doctoral candidates and students and, and, and alumni. Uh, that is, uh, should your identity, should your interest, should your influence, should your insight, should your integrity, so five I, and that is identity is about foundation, interest is about focus, influence is about uh, friends, and inside about the like, fortitude and then uh, in terms of a future. So let's, uh, let me just talk about this uh, one by one. <clears throat> uh, when I was in Korea, uh, my family uh, is not a believer. So I never had any chance to uh, study the Bible or anything. But I, I, upon coming to uh, the university uh, with a friend's uh, invitation, I have to study the Bible. But one particular uh, verse was actually very, very uh, this, uh, this, uh, intriguing and important. That is, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? In other words, we may try to gain a lot of the success uh, in this world, and then you can say we gain a whole world. But what's the point? That your yourself is not there. I mean, in a sense, for the first time. I really uh, recognize the importance of myself. I mean, you know, my, myself, my identity. So keep myself and then take care of myself and then uh, keep it. And that was really uh, a strong impress uh, on me. Now, let me just talk about two uh, these people. One is uh, uh, this uh, Leo Tolstoy, a Russian writer. This is a, a Tolstoy is maybe in his 20s, in his, in his late. But as you know, the Tolstoy, he uh, really tried to change Russia. And he was from an exploitative family, but he really wanted to be a better, better of society and so forth. But in later years, he died in a small uh, his, you know, train station in later years, I wonder. But he, uh, this one of his uh, remarks is everyone thinks about changing the world. But no one thinks about changing itself. This is not uh, this criticism about other people. This is, uh, in a sense, uh, this uh, self discovery. That's all, that's what he found out in later years. Well, I spent so many uh, years of my life trying to change the world, but what really changed is change myself. So, for example, he had an insight about Russia and the Russian war, war and peace and so forth. He could read the minds of the, read the spirit of the age and so forth, but he could not read his, the mind of his wife. Okay, All right? So I think is he finally realized importance of himself and the thing. Now, another one is Aldous Huxley. Uh, as you know, uh, he uh, was a brave new world, what the world is is a brilliant uh, scholar. One of the things I like is consistency in contrast to nature, a uh, conscious life the only completely consistent people are dead. So I think his insight is uh, wonderful. But one of the, his points is that I wanted to change the world, but I found that the only thing one can be sure of changing is oneself. I mean, basically saying the same thing. That means uh, in uh, whatever we do in this life, who we are, I think our self-identity is a tremendously important thing. Now, <clears throat> I like this Stephen Hawking's uh, this comment. I, I, I you know the brilliant scientist, but also physically handicapped and could not speak very well and so forth. But this is what he said. However difficult life may seem, there is always something you can do and succeed at. I really like this. In other words, as you try to uh, think about what your life is about, your career and so forth, sometimes you wonder, would, would, I, would I really make it? But I think it is worthy to know. You know, you know, there's a lot of tremendous constraint, uh, you know, physical constraint, and then this, this oral communication couldn't do well. But even so, 
There's always something you can do. And so to the addictive about this really the value of oneself and identity. So that is one that, that I would emphasize. So, so number one is establish yourself, okay? And then really value yourself and then your potential. That is a, a number one as a foundation uh, for this, uh, this thinking of a career. Another one is uh, keep your interest. So keep your interest. I think that is a very important part. That means keep your interest means your interest is really slowly in life. So, uh, you know, I just uh, I tell, um, um, you know, this, uh, you know, my students, but also as I observe my grandchildren, they are five years and six to seven years old, I just uh, observe and they just see at the difference. So find what you love to do. And uh, during my, uh, this, uh, this uh, teenage, uh, this, uh, the uh, grade school, elementary school, uh, I tend to uh, read this Nathaniel uh, Horton's The Great Stone Face. Uh, this is actually is a very short, uh, this is short story, <clears throat> but this boy actually, uh, you know, it, it, uh, grew up with uh, this, uh, this great stone face. It looked very nice. And so he was actually uh, looking for others, you know, great establishment, business people, politicians, and so forth. And finally, as he pursued this uh, this great stone face, in those face constantly, and then he actually he was the one who actually become similar to the great stone face. So I think the point here is that as you try to develop interest, I think you you love to find what you love to do, but in the course of doing so, you just focus on the person you want to become. So if you want to in your twenties. Really think about what kind of 30 something person in uh, later 10 years I want to become. What kind of scientist I want to become? What kind of person? So focus on the person you want to become. And that is very, very important part of the interest. Okay, all right then. Um, so let's uh, move on the next. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this uh, Peter Drucker uh, is, uh, you know, this. Uh, he's my mentor. I, I did not uh, have a chance to see him. Uh, he was born in, I think, Austria, Hungary, and then uh, he died in 2005. So he's, uh, he uh, was active in his research and engagement until age 95. <clears throat> he got a, a degree from Harvard and PhD. And then uh, instead of uh, you know, working in Ivy League school, uh, well, because he, uh, when he was interviewed in Colombia, he said, what will I do as a faculty? He said, basically, you will be teaching five or six different courses for how many years? For life? He said, oh, I cannot do that, okay? I, I don't want to just limit myself. So that's why he came to uh, this California and then Clement uh, Management School in there. He got freedom to teach any course he liked. And anyway, he made uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, the school very famous. But the point here is that he, uh, his research is a tremendous research. He's a, he's a focus on his substance. So substance is a <clears throat> study about the, how the business organization succeeds, but he said, I'm more interested in people than I am in how business works. So this is about essence or substance. So that's why his research is the matter. So I, this is what I also tell to uh, uh, students who are in the science field. In the science field, you're looking at natural world, about things, how work, but ultimately what you do with the research and there's implication of people, I think the essence is about people. Okay, so I uh, think the, the, the interest. Another one is, <clears throat> as you uh, develop your research interest in software, I think the early stage is uh, it's like uh, uh, this red ocean. In other words, you do what others do, okay? Uh, so uh, research is to see what everybody else has seen. So you are not studying all of certain in your new area. You just start with the, uh, what uh, you are doing and what is uh, this, uh, this is very important. So <clears throat> this is what is red ocean because a lot of people are doing. But afterward, research is to see what everyone else is seeing. So you are doing this 
uh, this red ocean thing, but to think what nobody else has thought. Uh, thought. That means moving to blue ocean. You develop your own area that also do what others do not. So this is going to be made a tilt and be clear as you, you are doing something uh, different, something where it's going to departure innovation. So I think this is uh, something you can uh, think about. So uh, be, uh, <clears throat> um, get to know of what others do. So that is the, the interest aspect. But another one is, uh, in a scientist, a lot of scientists, especially successful scientists, I never saw any successful scientists who are very lonely, uh, who are all by himself or self. Especially in time and age, I think this having friends is very, very important. So <clears throat> as the parable said, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together, I think that is actually very, very true in uh, this, uh, this matter. Now, Thomas Edison <clears throat> is a very known American inventor, and he has a thousand inventions. So a lot of people tend to think that the Thomas Edison's achievements are, are the result of an only hard work, but that's not the case. He had uh, hundreds of all uh, these young uh, scientists and they actually worked for him. And in, in, in some cases, people even accuse him saying that he got all the credit for what others do. Well, that is true. Uh, but I think his, uh, his motto is very clear. I have a friend in overalls and whose friendship I would not swap for the favor of the kings of the world. So <clears throat> the reason why he was so successful as a mentor is not because he's a genius in his hard work, a tremendous his, uh, his network of work and ability. Okay, this is actually true. <clears throat> One thing I uh, want to mention about uh, this plan that is, I think, very important to enlarge your world. So you are in the Europe. And then as a lot of scientists are coming from Europe, I think so you really need to expand your uh, network in Europe. But at the same time, the United States happens to be a uh, Europe, uh, Europe neighbor, I think it is uh, from European standpoint, getting uh, and just working together with the American scientists is so much, uh, you know, it's not the MS easy because they are very aggressive. And then, you know, this is not uh, sometimes unruly and so forth. But, uh, whether you work in the Germany or France or whatever, being connected to the United States is extremely important. I know a couple of uh, young scientists and then you know even uh, medical doctors who work in Germany or you know France. But if you really want to be well known, instead of trying to do the, uh, all your work in the France or the UK or whatever European country. You are connected to uh, Europe, at least uh, United States, and you know, US is a prominent institution and so forth. I think it is much, much better uh, for you to actually do things. Another one is, um, you know, because you grew up in, in Europe or you're born in Europe, you think you're European. Uh, that's what uh, uh, my, my uh, uh, four children, I have two daughters and two sons. When they went to high school, they thought they were Americans and so forth, but they, they went to college and beyond, they know that they are Asian American and they are Korean American. So that is always there. So uh, the, the, the fact that it's Korea, your, uh, your, uh, you know, this, uh, the secondary root is a Korea, and this, and this uh, the being uh, this familiar with uh, Korea, Japan, and China, Asia, Asia is rising. So you are in Europe, but you are able to be connected to the United States and Asia. I think that it is tremendous and is important. So in that sense, uh, your uh, enlarging uh, your world is very important. So even through uh, this conference, you get to know uh, these other uh, you know, people. I think developing network and friendship is enormously important. For that, I really appreciate this, uh, the um, uh, uh, President Kim and uh, uh, others who organize this conference and provide opportunity, right? So uh, <clears throat> these are the uh, friend network principles uh, I use uh, over the years. That is, 
Uh, when you try to make your friends, or let's say you go to a conference to just to get to know people and so forth, I think the first rule is keep your relationship expectations very low and none. So approach people with no expectation, if possible, low expectations. So the most network uh, or this or, uh, is the relationship effort fail because too high expectation at the beginning. So don't put too much expectation, right? So just uh, no expectation, no expectation, start small. And in a sense, the friends are like, uh, you know, these are flow, friends uh, flow like a river, okay? And then if you have a river, they send to the same water, no sense same water, friends come and go, only a few remain very, very long. So some of you had a friend in grade school, and then in your middle school and high school, and after 10 or 20 years of what you are get to know in, in high school, you do not necessarily keep all of them and you get to know them. But friends is not based on the heat of the past. Friends is based on uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the current and the future. But anyway, a relationship expecting to blow will save you from a lot of unnecessary disappointment and heartache. Uh, second one is that you try to make friends, whether it is you meet the, not only the friends, it's not about peers only. Friends can be a people who are older. So in, in a certain companies and so forth, you actually get to know a certain speaker. You approach, but point is that keep being helpful. No matter who you approach, never uh, ever uh, uh, you know, act like a beggar. And so in other words, do you want to get something out of this, of this uh, the relationship? You will never be able to succeed. Now here, this is what I say. People may give pennies and dollars for, to beggars, but they do not plan to work with them. So in other words, I think in order to have a relationship, to appreciate, help others help, to always offer value in your, in your way. I think that's a very, very important part in your relationship. And then another <clears throat> uh, point is that uh, after 20, and then as you are uh, 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 just uh, get grow older, it's becoming more challenging to make friends, okay? Uh, in the 20s, it takes time, maybe uh, just a uh, month or so. In 30s, it, it takes a longer time. So uh, what you do is that you make friends to your friends. <clears throat> Better to make new friends to friends now, I think that is a very important point. So. Uh, for example, I get to know uh, people from my friends. So when I did uh, this week and the uh, past week, I organized the Global Supplies Conference. I invited the major top uh, journal editors, and so they were happy to come because of the situation. But as after they came, and then the next year when I organized, I will invite their buddies, their friends, because when I approach directly their friends, they may not uh, be open, but if I do through them, so keep friends to friends is very important principle, okay, All right? <clears throat> uh, next point is that if you uh, have a clear sense of identity and then uh, you develop your interest in your focus and then develop your uh, influence with friends, you will definitely get an insight, your professional insight and also life insight. I'll talk about professional insight and life insight. And now we are in the, now uh, this uh, COVID-19 lockdown. So we feel this is a, uh, this is sorry for this. But <clears throat> Isaac Newton, uh, he was uh, born 19, 1643 and then died 1727. So he had more than 80 years of long career. But when he was in uh, Trinity College, now in the Cambridge University as a, as a student, he had uh, this great flag between 1665 and 1666. So at this time, these hundreds of thousands of uh, Londoners died because of this uh, great flag. That is, the death ratio is much higher than what we, uh, we see here in COVID-19. So uh, he was just locked, uh, locked down uh, in, in, in his uh, in a room in the air. And then during this time, I think he had uh, uh, this uh, the, uh, discovery of a prison, prison uh, this, uh, the, uh, the, uh, principle. And then he sat down with nothing, and then he saw the, uh, you know, the uh, apples of all number of trees. So 
uh, use the principle of gravity. And this is a great discovery actually occurred during this uh, lockdown period. I think that's a very interesting point. In other words, you, you gain life insight under your constraints and lockdowns, and that is the worst thing. So lockdowns and constraints and, and, and constraints, sometimes you become ill and you cannot do things, you stay in, in a hospital, or whatever. But those uh, set down time is actually great uh, deal of innovation. And another one is uh, this cultivation of not only this professional insight, when you actually uh, focus on uh, a certain area with your energy, you get professional insight. But life insight is important to professional insight. This is a, a wisdom trick to the world. Success is stumbling from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. So how we get uh, insight through many failures. And that is, uh, you know very well, so let me just go on. Another one is when you get the uh, professional insight, it's very important to know how to communicate, okay? So in Albert Einstein, he said, if you cannot explain simply, you do not understand it well enough. So uh, let me just one story. This is uh, uh, the physicist who received the Nobel Prize, okay? Uh, this is uh, this, uh, uh, the story I heard, so I do not uh, just tell what, who, who that was. And anyway, uh, he uh, got a Nobel Prize, so that's why a lot of these uh, newspaper people and then this the media attention was there. And so uh, his father uh, uh, was about almost 85 years old, and his father asked his son, "What's going on? What's what? What, what all this happened? And what, why people are, are here? What did you do?" He said, "Oh, Dad, you know, I received a Nobel Prize in physics." Oh, what is the Nobel Prize? Oh, there, this is the, uh, you know, this evidence of what being a top in the world. Oh, what did you do? I did the research on such uh, so, and so. So his father said, then, could you explain what your research is about? So this guy was explained to his poor uh, dad about 30 minutes. And then after uh, that, his, uh, his, uh, his father said, well, I have uh, no idea what you're talking about. I think it's whatever the Nobel Prize that is very stupid in that, in that, you, that they give a prize for somebody who cannot explain what, uh, what it is about. I mean, that was a very uh, this, uh, interesting story. But after that, I think he changed his mind. He decided to teach the fresh level courses and then try to communicate. Uh, this is also true. Uh, I, uh, I, I, <clears throat> uh, my research is in global supply chain management. My wife is a uh, uh, this registered nurse, and so uh, you know one one time just asked, so "What is the global supply chain management? You know, what, what are you doing?" And so I tried to explain uh, in a twenty minutes and said, "I have no idea what you're talking about," and so I really act, actually had to explain things in a way they should understand. So I said. You know, you are a, uh, this a model, and then you can actually do a lot of things, not just your effort alone. You actually get my help for doing chores, and then your grandchildren, your sons and daughters, or even when you invite uh, this, this uh, holiday, uh, this as uh, a family gathering, there's about sometimes more than 20 people, uh, 30 people come. You are not doing all this. You are actually doing together with the is the people, is the network, I mean, the friends and sons. So supply chain management is about how you can accomplish things, not your company's capabilities alone, but your what the network capabilities together. And anyway, I explained that way, and then she said, wow, that is what supply chain management is. If that's the case, I like to have to that she uh, I really love to uh, talk about things. So, <coughs> Whenever I have uh, some research idea, uh, I not only talk to the people who might be so they know or they understand, but I just uh, explain things to uh, this, my wife, my family, my sons and daughters, and then uh, the practitioners. And so anyway, importance to communicate. So uh, as, as I say here, if you can explain simply, you do not understand what I think that's a good point. Another one is, I think that this professional insight is one thing, but life insight is tremendous important. I know a lot of people who are professionally successful by 30 and 40, 
because lack of their life inside, I think they are not doing very well. So uh, since I uh, give a lecture to many different uh, places, I give a lecture on uh, this, uh, the um, uh, William Shakespeare, then I think that's, that's very good. But the point is that common aspects of tragic uh, stories of uh, these Roman, Julian, Hamia, Othello, and so forth, they're very successful by birds, and so forth, human, Othello, Julian, Julian, and so forth. Mm -hmm. But tragic mistake by lack of human and life. And Othello said he did not understand how precious his wife is. And track and the black and action. So, because of time constraint, I think I will just finish with you. So, uh, the last one is give you integrity. This is what I like about Frank Roosevelt. Frank Roosevelt has a polio, so he has a, a physical uh, this, uh, this constraint. And one of the things that when you reach the end of your life, uh, tie your knot in it and hang on. So, you know, American people that uh, love to say, hang on, okay? In other words, never ever give up yourself. Uh, you know, this year I love to watch this Netflix Korean drama. One of the drama is it's okay uh, to uh, not to be okay. I think it's the the, uh, the, uh, the story is interesting, but I like the way it is translated in English. No matter what happens, it's okay if you're okay, right? Okay, so when things are bad, remember it won't always be that way. Take one day at a time. When things are go, remember it won't always that way. Enjoy it. So it will pass. These two weeks will pass. So uh, things will pass, or the achievements, or whatever you pass, uh, you will always uh, remain. So with that, uh, whatever happens is okay. If you're okay with that, I conclude. So uh, let's see here. I cannot go through. So in summary, Post COVID 19 world will change with greater innovation. A lot of innovations are in progress. We'll just see that in another one year or two. Three probably future scenarios are technology even changing. A lot of technology even changing. And then Asia is rising, not only China, but Asia, Asia as a whole is rising. And there's a hegemonic rivalry between China and USA. This continues uh, in your case, uh, prospect unified Korea. What you will be doing. In Europe, about what you'll be doing with Korea and unified Korea in the world, especially Korea's position is uh, becoming more and more prominent. And no matter what happens in the future, you'll be okay if you uh, keep your identity, the foundation, keep your interest, keep your insight, keep your influence, keep your integrity. I think that is my uh, point. So, uh, sorry, uh, I didn't uh, intend to uh, make it too long, but. Uh, to be uh, more than uh, 40 minutes. Okay, that's all. Uh, I now any uh, questions or comments? You can post. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me to 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 채팅창에 올려주셔도 됩니다. 질문 드립니다. 아, 저런 교수님. 오케이. 어, 정영광. 네. 예. You talk about unification of Korea. Do you think it would be similar to that of Germany, or, um, because I know that they. Unified in 30 years, but st still struggling to equalize the difference of the economy, economical growth. And now we're 30 years later, and that difference isn't much bigger. Um, um, do you think it'll be still the similar unification procedure, or how? What do you think about that? Uh, uh, I, I think, in a sense, the Korea's unification is much more challenging than. Germany, uh, Germany is a uh, much bigger or uh, the um, bigger uh, this, uh, the populations and consensus were really there. Uh, so in that sense, uh, Korea's unification process is similar but much more challenging. What I'm saying is that regardless of difficulty and challenges are there, I think unification this uh, this agenda uh, is very very important, and that's what next 20 or 30 or 40 years. 
uh, will happen. If you look at Korean history, uh, Korea is not divided country. It is uh, always unified country for more than 2,000, 3,000 years of history. So uh, my uh, point is that it will be challenging, even more challenging than uh, Germany. So when it's united, I believe we take this step. So at least what our generation, I think they have to go. So it will be a more than a generation effort. So that is, I think, important direction uh, for the future. Okay. Uh, did I answer your question? Yeah, um, I was just still but, but wondering another, if another that's point, another point is that, Yeah, another point is that just as the German unification is done through United States, it's an international relation. It's not only German. Though. Without United States to support, German would never uh, be united. In the same way, Korea's unification is international dynamic. Korean people alone, no matter how North and South, Try to unify, they will never be able to do that. So, without support of the United States and other neighbors, so I think US uh, uh, support is tremendously important for achieving mission. Okay. And then Japan, of course, Russia, and then they have China has to be on board. Okay? Uh, if they uh, oppose, uh, you, you simply uh, uh, cannot be done. Okay. So, that's why international relations. I think it's very, very important. Any other comment? Thank you. A very good question, by the way. Okay. Okay, 다른 질문 더 추가로 받겠습니다. So, so, for example, many of our colleagues, I, 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 I'm very um, uh, happy to associate people not my age, but uh, at least 20 or 30 years younger than me. So many of them uh, are actually prepare in case there is a, a unification in scientists, engineers, business, economists, and those. And there, uh, I think, is a role in unified Korea, North Korea, very, very important. So a lot of scientists and then there are these scholars actually preparing for that uh, moment. Okay, any yeah. other questions? Uh, can I, can yeah, I ask ahead. something? Yes, you do. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Professor Paul, for the presentation. Uh -huh. um, I, I'm Pauli from Athens, Greece, and uh -huh. currently I'm doing uh, uh, my PhD. Mm. Uh, one thing that I'm curious about is that the paper or certification I'm trying to achieve is Doctor of Philosophy. Mm -hmm. But it seems like um, the knowledge or the research that uh, I, I don't know if it's only the engineering part be because I'm uh, doing naval and architecture and marine engineering. Mm -hmm. And it seems like I'm gaining only technical knowledge. Um, but uh, there was a really uh, interesting quote from um, Ravi Zacharias that you mm -hmm. might also know. Mm -hmm. um, and so my question is, how can you become a, and he, his point was that uh, in the academia, you are called to be a philosopher, um, mm -hmm. how you see the world and think. Um, so uh, my question is, uh, do you see that um, students in these days are not uh, being equipped as philosophers? Oh, okay. uh, all right. And how can you become a, a a real philosopher and not just, you know, being having technical skills? Okay, all right. <clears throat> uh, I think that's a very good question. So uh, there is a survey about uh, uh, student success rate. Uh, a lot of students go to Harvard, they get admitted, but they do not necessarily graduate. And then also even those Harvard graduates, I think some of them are very successful in the 30s and uh, in over 40s but after that they crash. So what it, it really shows here is in the long run, having is a clear sense of your uh, life philosophy, and in other words, life conviction, whether this um, mostly comes from your family values and your, uh, this, uh, the, the, your faith and then and, uh, you know, so forth. But that's extremely important. 
And so, in other words, if you want to be successful in academic world, uh, in, in the science world, if only focus on that one, I think you may uh, make in the life insight. So that's why you may, you may be technically successful, but you are not successful in the life. So that's why I think having clear sense of who you, who you are, what the sense of purpose, what you're trying to live life. And these are fundamental questions is actually very, very important uh, in, in your career. So for example, if I look at a lot of these, uh, these very prominent, prosperous uh, these, uh, these scientists, even Marie Curie, and she is known of a great science of achievement but her uh, life with her, uh, this, her husband, very, very uh, innocent, uh, the, uh, not uh, this, this, this function. Her love for her, con her, the, her country, Poland, as well as her doctor to the friend. So uh, her great life insight, as, uh, plus her uh, uh, technical and this, uh, this excellence, made her life actually very, very wonderful. So in this sense, be a good and wonderful person and then enjoy your life, know who you are, and then develop your friendship. At the same time, find what you love to do. In this sense, uh, the, the sense of philosophy is very important. Uh, one uh, point I just tried to make uh, the student in, and uh, what if uh, uh, the, uh, and the end of the world comes tomorrow, and then uh, one time I had a uh, this, uh, business, business seminar, one professor, uh, he actually talked about what it means to the top five in the world and so forth. So I asked him, what do you do when the world, end of the world will come tomorrow? Will you still do your research? I said, oh, no, no, no. I, if the end of the world come tomorrow, I will not do research. But my response is this. If the end of the world will come tomorrow, I will still do my research because that is more one of my routines, my daily routines and get up early in the morning and then you know pray and you know, so forth, that is routines. But research is another routine, then I will just do the same routine because the end of the world is not end of the world. There is another, uh, is a life. Uh, I happen to believe another, uh, this, uh, this eternal life. Therefore, and the world is not the end, okay? So you keep the routine. So this uh, has a lot to do with your sense of philosophy and value system. I think that's what you need to get. You will not get it right away uh, in twenties, but as you uh, focus on, on this, uh, you will gain both professional insight and your life insight combined. I uh, think you will uh, you will do very well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Just one more question. Uh, by the way, I will uh, <clears throat> leave my PowerPoint available uh, through uh, present uh, team, so you will have access. And though also, feel free to contact me. As I said, I love to interact with uh, people who are 30, 40 uh, years younger than I just I associated with my peers. So happy to associate with you, okay? Okay. okay. Um, okay. May I have one more question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, as I am the, the parent uh, generation like this student, I also, I also have the three children who study in the working in France. Yeah. And uh, my thinking is here in France, not only here in France, but Europe, we are uh, 1.5 generation or second generation or some small third generation. Uh, yeah. Compared to the US, I think there is a, a long history in the big uh, Korean community there. Mm -hmm. So here in France and here in Europe, we, you see we are here training students who are the first dog or other uh, professional, uh, will, will be the professional scientist mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, the community is uh, uh, not so big than US. So how do you think about the, the, the difference, not different, but uh, uh, Korean uh, stu students or Korean uh, uh, second and third, third generation of the Korean community compared to the European community. What do you, how do you think about the difference of, uh, or the 
Something like <coughs> kind of the opinion, please. Okay. So uh, I cannot say uh, in a very, you know, just uh, in, in one word, but my, my, my children, for example, they all are born in the United States and they are established in the Korean medicine law and the different places. But uh, here in the United States, uh, they uh, have a citizenship and so forth. They try to master their um, main thing and then they're actually doing well. And then, as I said, as they go to college, and then beyond, they are sensible Asian Americans, Korean Americans become much more important. And they recognize that then they actually uh, pay attention to their roots. Uh, if you look at Europe, I think that in Europe, uh, these France and Germany, UK, are always in Europe, I think that the, uh, the culture of uh, the empathy and those things are somewhat different. Uh, one thing I really want to uh, mention is in Europe, uh, you are being a Korean, uh, with, with this outlook is Korean and the Korean uh, this connection, and that will never uh, just depart from you. So therefore, developing uh, this relationship with the people you are comfortable with. So as far as a friendship, you don't need the 500 people. You need uh, this, uh, this very uh, effective numbers is 12 through 18. 12 through 18, these people you know, you, you will never be lonely. So I think that develop a friendship one, uh, one person at a time. And even though you're in, in, in Germany as uh, a friend, you have a connection with other friends in Greece and UK and, and so forth. I think with about 12 to 18 friends you have, I think you will be, uh, you will be fine. And so I think in, uh, in European uh, youth, as I see it, I think they uh, have a similar struggle as uh, our uh, second gen, the one F, and the gen in the uh, United States. But I think that the, the, the reason why you actually connected a larger part of the world is more critical. In other words, if you are treated well in France, uh, don't try to be excel only in France. I think really connect with a larger world so that people in your, in your France, they know that you are much bigger than who you are in France. And so that is also I true. I talked talk to uh, uh, you know, my, the second gen in Japan. When you are trying to be uh, this actor only in Japan, Japanese will never recognize you. But if you are connected a larger world in Korea and the United States and uh, Europe, and then also be able to uh, work well with the Japanese in Japan, you will be treated better. So in this sense, I think the Expanding your horizon, expanding your world is extremely important. So that's why if you do a PhD in, let's say, in France and so forth, don't just satisfy with it and just go to England or you know or United States, and you actually do uh, this other additional work and so forth, and just expand your horizon and then your boundary. That's uh, very very important. Uh, I hope that uh, that uh, answer your some of your question. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Surely there is a difference. Uh, you know, US is a big country, but uh, ah. single uh, one language is, uh, but in Europe it has uh, so many different countries, different languages, different cultures, long history they have. Yeah. So this is, uh, and here we are, uh, our second generation, third generation is starting to the community. Yeah. Yeah. So this is different, surely. So in that sense, I think Europe, European, uh, growing in Europe is an advantage because is America is English only people, okay? That's all. But Europe, you, if you make an effort, you can uh, uh, be fluent in uh, three or four languages. And so that language capability, especially if you are fluent in Korean, I think that will give a lot of mileage as you go up, okay? Right? So uh, being, uh, of course, in English is not you know, the, the international language. You have France, and then you have this, the French, and German, and English, and Korean. And this, this multiple language, you can actually have this uh, good command of, of these languages. I think it will do a much, uh, much good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, 대단히 고맙습니다. 혹시 yeah. 어, 시간 되면 다른 질문 하나 더 받도록 할까요? 혹시 학생들 중에 있을까요? 네, 좋습니다. 예, 예. 하나. One more question, if you can. <laughs> okay, thank you.
if you derive a question, you can just share what's the one thing you learn from my lectures or comments. That is also true. It's not always questions, just comments, what you learn through the lecture saying, oh, your lecture is so boring. I don't learn anything. That's okay too, okay? <laughs> so there's something about uh, what the, my lecture was like, okay? 네, 고맙습니다. 그러면은 저첫 어, 세션에 첫 오후 첫 강좌로 어, 강연해 주신 한 시간 정도 강연해 주신 폴홍 교수님께 감사의 말씀을 드리며 박수로 감사의 말씀을 드리, 드립니다. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we'll keep in touch. Okay? Alright, thank you. Okay, alright, bye bye.